So this is a video where I'm going to go over how to configure, uh, download the TH3D Marlin firmware, specifically on a CR10S, but the same procedure should be able to work for any other uh, 3D printer, basically, that can use Marlin. One thing to note, this is a requested video from my other video where it shows you how to upload the hex file uh, from, you know, from this process to the CR10S. So let's take a look at this. So the first thing you're going to need to do is get the, th uh, we're, we're going to actually do the TH3D unified firmware package here. Uh, I prefer to use that one just because it has a lot of features built into it. Uh, I think it's a little bit easier to configure than Marlin, uh, than just straight up Marlin, but it does use the Marlin firmware as a basis for it. So just keep that in mind. So you can search on Google or you can uh, reference the link I'm going to put in the video. You take the, go to this website. So in here, it's going to give you the, uh, disclaimer, basically updating firmware is risky. If you screw it up, you may have to flash your board using JTAG or some other method. It's a mess to do that. I would recommend not screwing it up. So if you're not comfortable with that, please stop here and just live with your uh, existing firmware. If you want a better printer or something to print better, uh, we will take a look at how to configure this. So here's all the supported printers. It includes the one that I'm talking about, CR10S right here, but it supports most Creality printers, most ANET, you know, all the Ender series, most of the really, really big uh, Chinese brand 3D printers are supported. Okay, so what you're gonna do is click on this link and download it. This is the latest version. Um, and then we're gonna go about how to configure it. I've already downloaded it to speed things up and you extract it. So what's gonna happen is uh, this is just an existing directory I've extracted. You're gonna go in here into this uh, uh, directory and you're gonna use this open firmware windows bat. Uh, I don't, I guess I've never done it on the other uh, other platforms, but I assume you can, you can configure it in, in any platform. So it's gonna open up to this uh, Arduino one point, uh, whatever version of the Arduino toolkit that it used. And you're going to get this thing with that basically says all the settings are configured in the configuration file. Now, one thing I will note that I have modified this version of it. So we're just going to go through and I'm going to give you some examples of things that you'll want to remove. But the exact configuration is going to depend on what settings you, you, know, you want to use. So you can skip these first ones. And you're going to go to the configuration.h tab. So click on that. Uh, basically you comments in here are two slashes. So, um, they have some flashing notes. Basically you want to read through this and then we can go down here. So what you're going to have is you're going to have one, you basically uncomment one printer. Don't screw that up. It's probably going to make things a mess. So, you know, if you have one of these other printers, but we're going to go down, we're going to find the CR10S. So here it is. So I've already commented this, but the, it actually comes like commented, uh, commented out. So we remove the comment there. If you had another CR10 printer, you uncomment, you, you know, uncomment those. Now, if that's all you want to do with this firmware, go ahead. You could flash it just, just with that, with the basics. Let's talk about a few other settings here though that I use and the one of the other reasons why I use this printer. So uh, if we go down here, I don't use the easy ABL. Actually, I plan on getting uh, a BL touch here at some point, but this supports it, but there's no, uh, uh, I guess, customer support for it if there's a problem with, with the company. Um, this is things for various custom uh, uh, settings. I don't use any of them. Dual extruder, single hot end. So if you have a, like if you're mixing filament, which is probably better than having two nozzles. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. 
Um, go down. So we have more printers. More. See, Ender three. We have Ender three dual board. All this other settings. If you need to set those up, Ender four, Ender five, and CD. So basically, just more printers. So if you have TiVo, CDC, etc. And let's see here. More. Yeah, I guess they've added a lot of print. Uh, I did configure this. They did notice they've added a lot of printers here. So that's for pr different type of printer. Okay, in printer section. So here's easy ABL settings. So this is the stuff that TH3D sells. Um, this sets up what you will use that probe for. Um, this is for custom probe offset. So if your probe is set up to be different offset from the from the uh, nozzle, you can figure it here. So I have a, uh, I forget what it's called, a uh, Bode, uh, Bontac extruder. So if you have a Bontac extruder, you will need to uncomment these two defines. So these normally are com or this is commented out. The define custom e-steps value, I think, is is uh, set to um, four four sixty three for th three three D tough extruder. I, I think, but they have the BMG extruder, which is four fifteen default. Now I have it configured differently in my startup script for Octoprint, but this is a default value to use it. And if you're using a BMG extruder, or I think a tough extruder you'll need to reverse the e-motor direction it's real simple in here it's better than flipping the uh, pin directions i think um let's see here the other thing i use is i use the v6 hot end so you have to uh select this otherwise you aren't going to be able to uh it, it just it sets all the settings for for the uh for this hot end, I guess is the best way to to uh, define it. And then, if you have other like other therm thermistor, other uh, things, you can set these. Set the high temp. If you have a bed one, you can set that. If you have a different one, set that one. Actually, I think. I wonder if it's running hot. I think I'm actually supposed to be uncoming that. Oh, no, no. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I need to be uncoming that. Well, I guess we'll see. That may be why I'm having some some temperature deltas, but that's fine. It seems to work okay without it with that. And we go down here. So this is uh, thermal runaway protection. This is another big reason to install the Marlin firmware. The I think it, I don't know what the new firmwares from Creality have, but I know in the past they had this stuff turned off because they didn't, sometimes it, it's tripped when you don't want it to be. But uh, you can set your settings here. And then if you have an AC bed, you can set that. If you want a high bed temp, you can define that there. And the other one is since I have 5015 fans that whine when it's under 100%, uh, I use the define fan fix. Uh, one other thing I've done is I've disabled the boot screen so that saves a little bit of space in your firmware uh, and the reason why is because I've changed some of the buffer sizes basically I've, I've let it use up more space to improve the uh, print quality this is for linear advance I do not have that I've heard it doesn't work very well with the CR10 uh, uh, v2 um i don't know I, uh, it's just going to improve like arcing performance but i haven't had any big issues in here here's the bl touch so if you have um if you have bl touch you have to enable these things um ch -ch -ch, manual mesh leveling so if you don't have an auto mesh lever and you want to try doing this it is a pain in the rear so i recommend just spend the 30 or 40 bucks and get a, a, a BL touch or an easy ABL. 
and these are different acceleration settings and then you're at the end so after we're done selecting all our options we're going to do a file uh, save and then we're going to do a go up here or you can just click the check mark but we I'll show you this thing verify and compile so it's going to run through and it's going to say compiling sketch down here now depending upon the speed of your machine this can take uh, a couple minutes or longer we'll just wait and see it uh, see it finish it shouldn't take too long on this machine Basically, it's compiling all the firmware. <clears throat> and yeah, I mean, obviously, if you have any questions, you can leave a comment in the section. Uh, there's a lot of help online, but I know that the, you know, this process is a little bit confusing. Again, I will say, please don't do this if you're not prepared to deal with the consequences I so far I haven't screwed up my board uh, by flashing firmware but I have screwed up other devices by flashing firmware on them so like routers and stuff I've, I've messed up before okay so when it's done you're gonna get this message basically sketch uses that um, I have not had a problem so I, I've got some stuff configured that I haven't talked about here that uses up more by dynamic memory I have not had a problem with this so far but I, it does warn you that you might have some instability. Okay, so after it comes back clean, it says done compiling, now you can do sketch um, export compiled binary. So it's gonna run through again. I don't know why it just, it already compiled it, I don't know why it just didn't export it, but all right, there it is, yeah, so I guess it just does if you haven't changed anything. After you run the export, you're gonna go back to your directory here, so we'll go back to here, and go into firmware, this thduff r2 directory and in here you're gonna see two files so these hex files are what you dumped out from your uh, uh, sketch essentially there's uh, maybe let me can I increase the size of this maybe I'll uh... <clears throat> all right here that's a little bit bigger um, so this is basically a <clears throat> the hex file that you want to look at and there's a with bootloader which we do not use for the Creality uh, printers I believe at least for the CR10S I can tell you the one you're supposed to use is this one uh, mega the without without the bootloaders if you load the bootloader one on um, either I think it fails to load or it messes your printer up and you're in big trouble with uh, with fixing it so I recommend reading thoroughly which of these files you want to use before uh, before taking them so once you have this you've completed the compiling portion and the setup portion the next step is to flash it and i have another video that i'm going to link below on how to do it this one uses the octoprint flashing mechanism but there's other videos on how to flash it it's not it's not very difficult to flash it itself it's the risky part is doing the flash and make sure you didn't screw up uh, anything or the power goes out or something in the middle so anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like and please subscribe. Please take a look at our other videos. Thank you.